And as uh, the day draws to a close, and my wife's doing a little bit of gardening over there, and the sun's still in the sky, have a look at that. Awesome, yeah, really nice. Um, it actually feels a bit autumn -y today, but in fact it's spring, spring has sprung. We've had the equinox, no, yeah, the spring equinox was yesterday, as was the uh, total eclipse, or near total eclipse. Um, and uh, it's time for another episode of uh, Our Friends Electric, episode 20. Flipping heck. Last one was about 56 minutes. This is going to be a bit shorter this time, um, just to keep everybody sane. Um, but we've got a few things to uh, look at and discuss. So let's uh, let's have a look at some of the uh, the changes in the way the weather's been going and the way the battery has been behaving. Um, what I've done is put a collection of little bits and pieces together to show you uh, that the battery charge has not really been that good still uh, we're about five or six degrees in the morning and um, overnight it's going down lower than that and the batteries are not giving us uh, the optimum recharge i'm getting about uh, 70 or 80 to each charge 80 84 miles generally um but that does seem to last longer um so maybe it's all a little bit a little bit of guesswork on the gasometer's behalf, uh, which I think it is, definitely. Um, there's been some interesting posts on the uh, Speak EV forums. We've been discussing about the new leaf and the potential for 130 to 150 mile range, which, uh, although it's uh, you know, much improved and better, it's not really enough. If you're going to have a leap, a change, an addition, a, a modification to the car to make it better. Uh, my thoughts are really it should be doing 200 to 250 miles in a single charge. Uh, that would be the leap I, I would want to talk about really. Um, Tesla's been doing it since day one. Don't know why other manufacturers can't do that. Um, Elon Musk has uh, obviously you know, been doing it a bit longer and uh, has a different approach. He uses uh, smaller batteries than what's generally used in the industry uh, by people like Nissan and Renault uh, and BMW and etc. Um, anyway, so let's get on with the episode and see what's been going on in the last couple of weeks. Good morning. Well, I've just been having a look at something on the uh, central console and I wanted to see if anybody out there's experiencing the same thing because it's quite interesting uh, and it doesn't appear to bear any resemblance to what I have experienced. So let's have a look. Right, take my glove off. Um, here we go. This, in episode 19, uh, you all saw this display and you can see from there there's four Three is halfway down there somewhere. So this this is the last week and a bit. So uh, today, yesterday, day before, day before, day before, day before, day before. Day before. So fourth um, of March, third, second, first, twenty eighth of February, twenty seventh, twenty sixth, twenty fifth, twenty fourth. Now. Bearing that in mind and looking at the number four, which is what episode 19 was all about, trying to achieve a much better uh, economy, um, I saw Ian do this, I thought, oh, I'll have a quick look at that. In this menu, you can do your trees and you can do your energy economy. Connect to information centre. And what it does is it goes off and it gets the information and it brings it back. So my question is this. Um, when you see what's coming up on screen, how does that in any way, shape or form reflect the fact that I was 3.789, 4.1, 4 4.2, all the way through last week and the week before? As of the 1st of March, your energy economy was 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. 3.1? Based on the last five trips, <laughs> your energy economy is average. How is that a true reflection? 
you achieved a silver rank for the regional energy economy ranking. So I tried. On the second of March. Tried really hard. My result for February was a gold ranking. Tried really hard. I got a gold gold ranking there, but it said silver before. On the second of March. Hold on. You finished three seven three three RG in the global energy economy rankings. The first place driver was in Italy. Oh yeah, we don't need the tip. We don't need the tip. But isn't that odd? Um, that the proof here shows that three point it's nearer three point seven or eight, or even nine. Really, I mean, there's very little there below. 3.5 I don't think so how the heck did I get 3.1 for the average that just doesn't make sense does it it's about as accurate as the guess -o meter yeah that's what I believe um, at the minute unless somebody can shed some light on it if somebody understands that a bit better maybe Lance or maybe I should actually show it Lance and ask him um, disappointed in that actually um, I was looking at it earlier and it said it, I got a silver ranking and now it's given me a gold ranking. It's a little bit sort of um, nonsensical, really. And if it's not going to be consistent, I don't think it's very, uh, very useful. <laughs> ah, well, just thought we'd uh, share that with you. Good morning. Well, it's uh, March the 10th. And uh, look at this. Doing all right. Doing all right today. Uh, just travelled into work. Oh yes. Oh, you know what? A second ago, that was four point four. I swear, honestly, <laughs> it's gone down to four point three. That's probably because I'm sat here with the battery on. Anyway, so we had ninety nine miles to start uh, this morning, and uh, we've now got eighty miles, and we've done sixteen point nine miles according to the mileometer. So we've only actually sort of mislaid two or three miles. But the important thing is 4.3. That's really good. Um, that's because the temperature's getting a bit better. Yeah, so the temperature is seven degrees, uh, which is a bit better at the moment. And so that sort of goes somewhere to explain in the 4.3, I think. Um, plus the fact that I'm just driving a little bit um, I, st I am still trying a little bit, um, not as much as I was last week. So maybe that's an accumulative average that's based on previous averages and it's going to get better as the temperature goes up. Good. That's the last few days. Uh, so Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. So I had a bad day last Wednesday for some reason. Um, but other than that, we're we're, uh, we're doing okay. Cool. Wonder if uh, there we go. That's better. Can you see? Yeah, I can see now. So um, it's um, March the tenth, and uh, just had to come down to the railway station, bring Naila. Uh, she's going back to town, and um, got a nice surprise on on the uh, on the charge. It's uh, what time is it? It's about five, about five to ten. Hold on a second. There you go. Yeah, about uh, nine nine fifty-five, and uh, I've done a couple of miles, and we've got a hundred hundred and two on the uh, on the charge, which was really good. Now that's only been charging since um, time did I get home? Seven o'clock, and it's now ten. So three hours up to pretty much full. Full, let's just see if it is full charge. I don't know. If, 98. Yeah, so it would have been about full, I would have thought. I've had the heating on. Got the seats on. Uh, oh, put the steering wheel on. There we go. That's nice and warm now, I hope. There you go. Put the steering wheel on there. Um, and we've got the uh, the seats on. So that's good. Yeah, so um, it's two degrees outside. Very cold. And uh, just drove down to the station. Let's have a look at the. Uh, let's look at this. There we go. Ooh, wrong one. Yeah. So today I've done quite well. Um, it says under four there, but in fact, as you can see on the uh, 
dashboard it's 4.1 it was 4.3 um, before we came out but of course I've had the heating on and I've had um, there we go four, it's about 4.1 yeah and we've had um, this yeah we've we basically had the heating on and the we'll put the blower on and the AC there we go like that <laughs> just to de, uh, demiss the car so very good two degrees and it charged 202 miles um that's the first time in four weeks yeah since Nella came back since man yeah when we went to manchester airport so that, that was just that was about four or five weeks ago wasn't it yeah so interesting um so it looks like with the way i drove home and the fact the temperature was warmer when i started to charge because it's been a beautiful day that's why i told you it was march the 10th march the 10th was that beautiful sunny very warm sun this afternoon uh so yeah that's that's really good um we'll be looking forward to, to getting higher energy economy and uh better charges and let's see if we can break my um all the trains here break my record uh, on on this car which was 112 i think it was 113 i have to go back and have a look on the videos but anyway right so that's uh, just a quick catch up and uh, the seats are really nice and warm oh two degrees but i've got a nice warm car keeping me warm and the steering wheel see you in a bit morning 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 right uh, let's have a quick squeeze on here it's the day before the eclipse uh let's have a look at this so we're doing okay um as I said in the last episode, I'm not going to spend too much effort trying to do more than four. And I think you can see that that's borne out by the fact I'm doing about 3.8 or thereabouts. Um, at the minute today, just about got four. So there we go. Um, usual, usual sort of stats there. About 16 and a bit miles. Um, did the same route today, but maybe I didn't reset the clock until I'd started out. I can't remember. Um, anyway, 4.0 on the economy side, so that's not too bad. And uh, it's a lovely day. Look at that. Very nice. Actually, it'd be better if there was no window there, wouldn't it, really? Yeah, so not too bad. Sun's out, uh, and it will be out tomorrow, but there'll be an eclipse. So, uh, might be sat here looking at the eclipse tomorrow. Hey, hey, hey. good. So um, it's a good job we're not solar panelled uh, for tomorrow's eclipse. We wouldn't be getting any any juice for a bit, would we? But uh, as that's not the case, I shan't worry. Right, that's the update. Thanks very much. Bye. Well, it's the weekend of. Uh, well, the eclipse has just happened. It was yesterday. And uh, Richard got some really good pictures of the eclipse, but I was in a meeting, so I missed most of it. Um, anyway, here's the pictures of the eclipse, because they were very good from our front door. <laughs> okay, so um, I just thought what I'd do, uh, I'd go out and wash the car, because um, I haven't washed it for a few weekends. And what I found, <laughs> was, do you remember last year I had lots of trouble with um, diesel bits and pieces? Well, what, what I've found is over this winter, those bits haven't been accumulating on the back of the car as much. Um, and I have done a quick sweep, uh, but I'll just show you the back so you can see. So, it's... Uh... <laughs> it's that time again. Lovely cup of tea, hot water, spray. Got a little bit of a uh, little bit of that stuff. Don't drop the phone in there. And uh, it's time to wash the car. I'm saying, um, interestingly, 
you can see there's I mean there are bits they're small bits but it's very fine very small particles that have accumulated over the last couple of weeks rather than those very large bits now I don't know if that's to do with summer uh, uh, or winter or or what but anyway um, the car's been a lot less dirty in the winter than um, than it has in the summer and that's very odd and I don't know if that's because of uh, the temperature and uh, some effects on diesel particles maybe maybe they're a bit uh, a bit heavier in winter or something with the uh, dampness or the cold doesn't let you doesn't let them attach to the car or perhaps uh, the bits themselves are not as floaty uh, in winter now that's that's sort of three or four weeks this is the fourth weekend i haven't washed the car although i am washing it now and you can see that that's very just coming out so that on the uh, this is cold water um and it's a disgrace actually i don't normally like to keep it so poorly but um anyway i'm gonna do a, a job on it and we'll see how it looks at the end i'll give you a quick quick glimpse when it's finished it's actually uh really nice afternoon this afternoon and we're going to be able to get uh, you know, some nice warm water get into these uh, deeper recesses on the roof in the a bit squeaky so not too bad must have done a good job last time i did the car old shine back on it nearly a year old now so uh, I've been trying to keep the car in as much you know as close to showroom condition as I can uh, I was washing it every week come what may so that in the winter proved to be a bit tricky so um, it's got this covering on it this sort of it's called uh, this uh, Diamond Bright. That's supposed to keep it good um, forever. And we'll see, won't we? What I have been doing is using a little bit of some uh, tea cut just to get rid of tar stains, which built up over the, the summer months. And in fact, I've been building up a little bit over the winter as well, but. Not as bad as uh, not as bad as the summer ones. So what these lights are a little and they're very nice. A little worrying is that you, you often see bubbles behind the plastic, um, which is a bit disconcerting. Well, lots of people going past today. Busy day because it's a nice day. So, um, as I said, I'll give it a clean and then uh, we'll have a, a quick inspect and we'll see what the, uh, the body works looking like. The bad bit of the watch. But um, just to show you how dark, dirty it is. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Dark light. <laughs> See the difference? It's like one of those commercial on telly, isn't it? You can see the difference immediately. Oh. But you can actually. <laughs> if you own a leaf, you'll know there's quite a few nooks and crannies like this that are just um, molded in the body work, and you have to get. In there and get uh, get it very clean. Keep it clean. 
lots of, lots of uh, shapes that you have to just get the sponge into the middle of. It's quite tricky actually. That A is difficult for instance. You usually get a, a bit of a cloth. Something like, uh, something like this. And you can then get into those difficult to reach areas and clean them properly. Otherwise you just end up with a big black slug living on the back of the car. There we go. That's all right. Don't forget while you're here, give the little cameras a wash. And I tend to give them uh, a sort of a daily clean anyway, but just to get that area a bit less mucky. Same with the handle grip. And again, being near the moss, this area, this bit here, all this gets a little bit full of stuff that you don't want in. So I tend to get a uh, cloth and, excuse me, give that a bit of a clean. This side's not so bad normally. Really, because it's mostly rectangular. Other area. I think we can. The other areas, certainly where the number plate is, this sort of area gets filthy. Uh, as you can see. So that needs a good clean. And uh, number plate clean, of course. I guess because the car's moulded, it can have these, these shapes. Um, I don't think that's metal, that's plastic, isn't it? That's metal. Main bodywork seems to be, but the bottom front part and the bottom back part are obviously uh, moulded plastic of some kind. Wow, look at that sunshine. See it bouncing off the, the glass there. So I thought, um, with the sun being on this side, what I'll do is have a quick look at the difference between the opalescence and the muddy mud. And if you can see the opalescence here because it's it is literally this bit's fairly clean. It's the, the bit that's nearer the floor really. All this, all in here, you can see all the bits, all quite uh, horrid. So we're gonna give it a we've given it a couple of rinses already. Just um you'll see, maybe. I don't know if you will. See, don't we? You can see the the film of murk and mud coming out. Horrid. Always give these a really good clean. Something that was that struck me, it's funny isn't it really? Get an electric car and using water to, to clean it. <laughs> no, it's not a problem really. This sort of stuff, this is really hard. Sort of, it, it sort of uh, sticks, and then if you just try to wipe it off, it won't, it just won't come off. It's it's like paper mache. And then when you get some warm water on it, that does the trick. Normal anyway. So what I thought we'd do, um, we'll get the car mainly clean, and we'll have a look at. Uh, Getting rid of some of these tar, tar marks, which just are little bits of of tar that um, that appear when you've been driving on, usually on warm roads or hot roads, motorways, that kind of thing, and uh, they don't they tend not to rub off, and it's probably not a good idea to rub them. So we just use a little bit of uh, a solution on them, and they often just literally lift off. That's beginning to look more like the car that I know and love. There we go, get in there, get in there. Bit more work to do around that side. Let's go and have a, let's go and have a look around there. On the roof, get this done. And then on the sides. Just giving the, uh, 
the top a bit of a dry and notice we've got a little uh, little passenger I don't know if you can see a little ladybug hello ladybug can't see you very clearly there there we go almost almost done now ready for a uh, little bit of close-up work looking all right not looking bad at all uh, what normally happens is the day after you come out and you go um where's that black streak come from and it's usually because you missed a big chunk but i think we've got most of that so let's have a look at the clone oh, there's a bit there Oh yeah, so there's a bit of a spot, a, a tar spot. We'll have a go at that in a minute. There's some more smaller ones there, but they're difficult to see. But anyway, is that in focus? It's really hard to see whether it's in focus or not. Anyway, let's have a closer look. So if you lift the uh, lift the, the boot up, you'll see what I mean about water getting underneath the plastic a little bit. Um, I don't think it's too much of a problem as long as, as long as it dries quite quickly. And that's usually like that, a little bit of bubbles. See the little black edge? I tend to, uh, I tend to try and get that off the cam. And this edge down here, when you've opened the boot, that also usually needs a bit of a polish because there's often little bits in these areas have accumulated. So we'll just give them a quick clean. And then it's gone. Lovely. So, what we're looking for is this stuff. Oh, yeah, Teacot Original Restore. Only a little bit of this, and generally watered down a bit. And then uh, that's that's what we'll be using to help get rid of stuff off the edge of the car. So, let's see how that works. So here we go. Here's a little bit of black. I've just given this cloth um, a, a proper rinse, and uh, you can see there are some other little black. You may not, you may be able to. That one you can definitely see because I can see it on the screen, even this light. So what I'm going to do is just give it a bit of a bit of tea cut. If I can open it with one hand, which you can, just about. Usually give this a bit of a shake before I start as well. Um, there's some stuff in the bottom there, so just get that out and pop it on it. Like that, and you'll see it start to smudge because for some reason this is like magic. And you can just see it will just gently, it's almost like magic. It's done chemical but that is now pretty much gone if well nah, not bad and it's not it's not like a half an hour messing about and you can use the rest of just anything else there's just little bits here and there and you can just spread it out and then I give it a clean a proper clean with the actual cleaner side of the cloth and make sure there's no tea cut left on there. It does dry up and you're not supposed to use it in the sun, so this is not a good idea really, I've just realized. <laughs> but anyway, it's really quick. Um, there's another one there. Let's see how that one does. That one's gone as well now. Awesome. Right, we'll go to the back. There's one more on the back head saw before. We'll check that one out. Just here. Okay, so just what's on my finger, and then very gentle. You don't really need to be. A, the idea is not to scratch the paintwork, but to coerce this uh, molecule of stuff to dissipate, and it will. Sometimes you just may need to give it a little help with your fingernail. But you need to get this stuff on it first. 
and when I say your fingernail, I mean I don't mean like digging, I mean just gently running the edge so you feel a little bit of friction. And then when you've I hear it, hold on. Yeah, see? It's quite solid that. Might put a bit more on on this occasion. Go right for it. And then give it a wipe. Certainly gone down. Just gently, there it is, it's gone now. Awesome. Oops. And then a proper clean with the wet part of this cloth to get rid of all chemicals off the paintwork because you don't want anything left on it, especially if it reacts with the sun. That would not be good. And there we go. And that is how I usually deal with little black spots of tar. The, uh, the idea is to keep doing it. See, there's quite a few down here, but they'll just probably mainly. Maybe some of those are just dirt, actually. The idea is to keep doing it on a regular basis and just just maintain the vehicle's glossy shine and the finish. There we go. Awesome. So that's what it's looking like. I'll go around the front and have a look. I'm not going to really spend much more time on it today. There we go, and that's taken less than an hour, so that's not a bad result for an hour's work. And a bit of elbow grease, awesome stuff. So these are some more of those moulded areas and you can probably see there's quite a few places there for dirt to collect and it does and it is. So we'll give it a bit of a clean, make sure it's at least reasonably clean. Great stuff. The finished product. So as you look at the leafless tree, <laughs> uh, yeah, spring has sprung, as I said, but there you go. The trees are still bare. Um, but by the time we get to the next episode, episode 21, the car will be uh, one year. It'll be one year old in our ownership anyway um, so that should be an interesting episode episode 21 will be mainly about the servicing of the car taking it down to the garage uh, anything that uh, they find that needs sorting out we'll talk about that uh, probably talk about the improvement in the batteries because I'm hoping with sunshine like this the uh, the battery pack will charge up a bit higher than it has been doing uh, remember we have been up to 113 I think miles uh, although it didn't get 113 but uh and cats are chasing each other and messing about um hello zelda zelda hello there's uh, oj <laughs> so uh, she disappeared now um so by the time uh, we're on to episode 21 um new episodes of thunderbirds will be airing on british television which i'm really looking forward to so uh fab um what else? Oh yeah, we'll be looking at uh, how the battery pack's improving as the weather warms up. We'll do a, little, uh, a few little sort of views on that. And uh, there's the servicing of the car, which we'll talk about. So, um, well, that's about it really. Thanks for watching episode 20. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please like and share with your friends and other people who may be interested. And if you really, really liked it, please subscribe if you're not already. That'd be really great. It's very encouraging to see subscribers. Um, checking out on Social Blade, we're now up to a C grade. So that's really good. So that's, you guys are amazing. There's been over uh, 42,000 minutes watched on the channel. 42,000 minutes, that's amazing. Thanks ever so much. It's 
really encouraging. So uh, keep watching and I'll keep making. Okay, thanks very much and we'll see you next time on our Friends Electric. Bye now.